Hello, everyone. We are here again live on Facebook with The Flow Show. Hello, Christina. Hi, Yolanda Shields. Good to have you back for, what is it? Episode number five. And that's significant because you know what five yeah. means? Yes. Share with what five means. We've been talking about that. Share that. We have been. We like Before we even started tonight's show, we were talking about the significance of five. And five was talking about grace. And I think that's like the perfect bridge from episode number four, talking about grace, moving into number the fifth episode, which is meaning grace. I just love what God is doing. So welcome to everyone joining the Flow Show tonight. We're so excited to have you here. We'd love to hear where you're tuning in from. We're always in awe that we've got family joining us from South Africa, from yeah. France, from the United States. Gosh, from like my family up in Michigan, Yolanda's got family all over the place down yeah. here in the South as a Nashville native. So we know we always have our Nashvillians showing out and showing up. Thank you yeah. to you guys. And if this is your first time here, to give you a little bit of info about the Flow Show, it stands, Flow stands for rather, Faith Leaders Offering Wisdom. Faith filled leaders offering wisdom. That's what we're here to do. I'm Christina Shear. I'm a social media evangelist, the founder of Shear Goodness, and a missionary that lived in South Africa, a published author. And Yolanda Shields is going to tell you a little bit more about who she is and what she does as you share with at least three people. The Flow Show, go ahead, just click on the bottom, share with a friend, invite them, because you're in for a treat tonight as we're going to be diving in to our specific topic, which is the truth that arises when you move from the empty place. So Yolanda, tell us a little bit more about who you are, what you do, and then let's dive in and talk about this show. Let's get to the good stuff. Absolutely. Well, as Christina said, I'm Yolanda Shields, an author, speaker, coach, trainer, Working in uh, working with uh, small business owners and nonprofit leaders, and have been doing that for a long time. I won't say how long. Do you have to try to figure out my age now? <laughs> <laughs> Twenty plus years I've been doing it, and 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 love it. Love working with startups, and love working with entrepreneurs that are stepping out and doing what God has called them to do. And so so excited about being here. To tonight with you and glad you're joining us. So make sure you share with others. Don't just keep this stuff to yourself. You Come should on. be sharing with other people. So we're excited to be here tonight again. As Christina said, our fifth show. Come on, guys. In five <laughs> grace. Grace, not perfection. We've allowed mm -hmm. God to just lead us in the topics that we're going to share with whether you're a business leader, a business owner, a missionary in ministry or working in the corporate or just working for someone, uh, we know that the things that we're sharing is going to really help you kind of go to that next level. And so, Christina, you know, you shared that, that this show is going to be about the truth that arises when you uh -oh. move from your empty place. But before we before we jump in, I want to see who's on, and we want to send a couple of messages out before we get started. Hi, LaShonda Fuller. I'm so, so glad to see you here. <laughs> and I see somebody on here, and, and it's the birthday girl, and Julia, happy birthday. We wanted to make sure I didn't post anything on social media today because I wanted to say it live online, and I yes. wore my red lipstick. It's, it's only for you tonight. It's, it, the red lipstick is for you tonight. Yes, hashtag red lipstick status. So if you're watching from home too, go ahead, put your red lips on. It's your war paint in honor of the one and only Julia Biaggi. And I think we have another shout out we have to do too. Absolutely. It's Kay's birthday, isn't it? Author Kay. Uh, oh, Kay, happy birthday. I, I didn't post. I was like, I'm not going to post yet. I want to just say it live on the show. So happy birthday, Kay. Kay is amazing, doing yes. some amazing work. And we'll never forget the time that Christina and I met her in Atlanta. And it was a God connection. And he has kept us. Some people you meet in your life, you know that God has divinely connected you. And Kay is one of those people. A uh, heart yeah. of gold, loves people, loves serving people. And so, okay, happy birthday. We we just pray blessings over you and the work that God has you doing. Yes, I, I co-sign on that. 
Kay's been an absolute blessing to my life, to my ministry, to the work that I've done in Africa. Like she's that person, that friend that you need to come through when your back is up against the wall. And she's been that person for me time and time again. So I'm so grateful for that divine appointment for sure. Absolutely. absolutely. (laughs) So Christina, you want to talk a little bit about our, a little bit about the opening of our topic of what we're going to kind of share today, give them the title again, and then we'll just jump right in. Yeah, I would love to share about that. So again, episode five, our title today is the truth that arises when you move from your empty place. And to kind of set this up, as you've noticed, as we've done each one of our episodes, Yolanda and I are words people, and we really love to spend some time in the dictionary and the Bible as we're preparing this, which I know that totally makes us nerds but that's okay we're all right with that that's why we're we're faith-filled leaders and we're offering wisdom people that love to dig into the root of the word and the root of the wisdom have the ability to have revelation and share it so we just want you to know where it's coming from so if you're doing some bible studies at home that's a good place to start bible dictionary word of god you've got that you've got the revelation of the word and then you can jump right in there so Let's break down that phrase, the truth that arises when you move from your empty place. So empty actually refers to containing nothing, not filled or occupied. So an example of that would be like someone took their empty cup back to the counter, right? You're taking something that is empty, it's void, there's nothing there, it's vacant, it's unoccupied, it's uninhabited, it's desolate, it might be deserted, abandoned, clear or free. So that's our phrase empty. And when we think about truth, it's a fact or a belief that is accepted as true. And the word arise talks about maybe a problem, an opportunity or a situation that emerges or becomes apparent. So if we look at that in the context of kind of our our title, if you will, is we're going to talk about a fact or a belief that emerges or becomes apparent when you move from that place where you feel like you contain nothing, you're uninhabited, you're feeling abandoned or desolate or bare or free of anything, and how we're going to get you to move from that empty feeling into something else. So I think before we can, um, well, let's just take a second and actually just acknowledge that it's okay to feel empty. I think that's an important place for us to start, Yolanda. I know I have felt empty. I, I totally repented before the show started that I pushed myself too far today and didn't do the things I needed to do for self-care, like regarding eating and hydration and sleep. And so I repent. And so if you're watching the show and maybe you fit the bill on those things, just just go ahead and deal with the Lord on that one. (laughs) We gotta gotta deal with the empty feeling of that we might be having first, but um, with the Lord. But then there's also this kind of realization that we have to have with self. And I think that originates with some aspect of our mind. So Yolanda, I'm going to hand it over to you and let you kick off our first point for tonight, which has to do with mindset. Absolutely. Mindset. What is your mindset when it comes to a a feeling empty? What is in your head? What's in your thoughts about that empty place? And so we're going to talk a little bit about mindset. Um, You can get stuck or get comfortable or have a mindset shift or move. You don't have to, sometimes we, we get so comfortable with being in an empty place. We, we begin to think it's normal. Mm, It's good. You can get so comfortable in it that it's becomes your normal place and it shouldn't. And so you have to do something to get out of that place. So you have to, you have to shift your mind to think, what does the word say? Who I am? What is Mm. who is, who, who, who does God say I am? Ooh, so you have to good. shift. The Lord says that you're the head and not the tail. You're above and not beneath. And so you have to really, when you're doing those devotionals and you're st- studying the word, you have to bring back to remembrance those things that you have read and, and those things that are true. Even those times that you felt empty or you haven't taken care of yourself, remembering, taking yourself back to say, okay, when I shifted my mindset, when I did something different, what happened? There was a change. There was a positive change. And so as you shift your mind, you're going to begin to feel different. You're going to begin to act different. 
and 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 but it's you have to be able to shift your mind especially when you've come become so comfortable with being in that place and sometimes we can get so comfortable in that empty place because people are feeding it oh Ooh. bless your heart Ooh. oh Ooh. you oh oh <laughs> i understand and we look for people that will feed us what we want them to feed us and then yes. that keeps us from shifting that mindset to be, I am victorious. Even though I may be in this situation, I had a couple of things to go on in the last couple of months. I'm like, oh my God, come on. Grace, grace, more grace, Jesus. <laughs> but I yes. could have taken those situations, even though they were bad, I could say, well, you know, I have the right to feel like this. All of this stuff mm -hmm. has happened. Or I can choose to say, no, not today, devil. You will not mm -hmm. have my joy. You will not have my peace. And you will not have me in an empty place. And I know what has been promised to me. And so when you start speaking those affirming words, sometimes I, po I post a lot of encouraging scriptures and words on, on social media. A lot of times it's for myself first. I'm like, Lord, let me, get, <laughs> let me, let me encourage myself today. So me we, too. <laughs> it, 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 it takes you shifting your mind in order to get out of that place. And, and it brought back to remembrance to me, Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28. That's and good. it says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. That tells us we don't have to do it in our own flesh. We don't have to try to work ourselves up to being not, not empty. But the word says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give, he will give us rest. We can rest okay. in him and not in ourselves. And so life lessons will make you believe that the your empty place is your resting place. It's a lie. Wait, 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 say that again. Your resting say, place. Yeah, you gotta say it one more time. We need that yeah. three times. Come on, Yolanda. Life lessons will make you believe that your empty place is your resting place. Whew. But it's not. And we should Whew. not believe the lie. The empty wow. place should be, not be your resting place. Empty is not normal. I mean, Christina was talking earlier and she's going to share a little bit about, I, I've done this. That's why it really touched home with me. <laughs> <laughs> not filling your tank up and praying that you make it home because you don't feel like, you know, stopping at the gas station and putting gas in and you aren't empty. And when Come the cars are empty, it will stop. It will stop working. It will not move. The same with us. When we're on empty, we're not really walking in all that God has for us. And so we have to, it's not a place that a believer should reside. Mm, that's good. If you're believing the word, you know, we, we sing songs about, I believe the word, the word is true. You know, all the songs about believing what the promises of God and then we get stuck because we're, we've started resting in that empty place when that's not our home. Mm, that's Amen. good. Amen. Amen. Christina, you want to, you want to, uh, I want to read one more scripture before we move to the next one. And this yeah. scripture is James one, five through seven. And it says, if you don't know what you are doing, pray to the father. We're going to talk mm -hmm. a little bit more about praying and how that, that homework piece that we always leave you with. You're going to talk a little bit more about that. <laughs> uh, if you don't know what you're doing, pray to the Father. He loves to help. He's waiting for us to ask. I love it. You'll get his help and won't be, it, he won't deny the help when you ask for it. But ask mm -hmm. boldly, believing without a second thought. Whew. Sometimes we ask and we don't even believe it. Sometimes wow. we pray for other people to be, you know, delivered and set free and move forward more than we do for ourselves. So when you're asking, you have to believe it. It's good. It's so good. Because when we don't believe it, people who worry their prayers are like wind whipped waves. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Just wow. all over the place. <laughs> you know, I, I love that. And I think that's a fitting transition, Yolanda, yes, because absolutely. when we were 
putting together marketing for today's show for our Instagram stories. And yes, that's like an actual thought process. Mm -hmm. um, we were doing that. And one of the pictures was like a gentleman, if you remember Yolanda, and his hand was up and his stress level was max and he looked like he was drowning in the waves and yes. it said like are you feeling like you're drowning with dread and i think that's a very fitting visual that aligns with this scripture that yes. some of us are like drowning with dread because we're in the empty place we're running on empty things that are normally easy to do are no longer easy to do um you know we've probably not been reading our word we're probably not spending time in the presence of god and we're probably not in a place of revelation that's probably what's been going on here and so really or, what that does community some we're ice in isolation and not in community we need community don't think that you're gonna fight those things by yourself that's good uh -huh. that's good and and i love what you said earlier yolanda about like don't let the empty place be your resting place and here's the thing there's no way to like work yourself or think yourself out of the empty place it's not there's no way to like escape the empty place exactly. it only changes when you have a fre fresh revelation and so as i was praying through this i my big aha that i had that i hope you take away from today you know whether you're listening live or on the replay is when you have a revelation of your current situation you find motivation and we're going to get into what the motivation leads to in your second point. But, you know, we've started with the mindset and now we're moving into dealing with your motivation. And so here's the thing. There's often, you know, our circumstances don't change, but we have this revelation of the situation, which now motivates us to kind of get through it. Quite frankly, I actually like strategically wore these glasses today, which is very ironic um, <laughs> because. I wanted them to be like a symbol, if you will, because most people don't even know I wear glasses, but it was a reminder that I even need a paradigm shift, that I need a different perspective. I need a different revelation. So sometimes we have to take off the rose colored glasses and we got to deal with reality. We've got to do those internal checks and we've got to sit with the Lord and be like, okay, God, I need a revelation about why I am going through what I'm going through right now. So if you are going through something right now, this is a real time show. We want to pray for people. Comment below. If you need a revelation on a situation, you're welcome to share it. We'll pray with you privately or we'll pray with you publicly. If you got some boldness on you, we'll pray with you publicly. That's for sure. So comment below. We'd love to support you. Um, whether you watch live or on the replay, know that we'll follow up. But here's what I want you to know. So when you're dealing with revelation, I, you know, it's hard to know whether or not you've had a revelation. I know that sounds strange, but the first thing that I do when I'm trying to kind of get through that place of finding motivation, I, I have to think about like, have I been there, done that before? Like, am I in a situation where I'm stressing about money before and I'm like, oh my gosh, I've got to pay the phone bill and I'm worried about $100 and I, and I give myself a moment to have revelation of my situation and go, you know what? God provided everything that I needed when I needed to get to Africa. He paid the bills. He provided the partnership. He literally sent God messengers with cash money in envelopes to meet me at places. Yes, that has really happened. And if you want to hear the story, <laughs> DM me. Um, I mean, I've literally been handed envelopes full of cash. I have been given money by strangers. Guys, yeah. I have crazy stories, like just favor of the Lord on my life. But I think that's one of those things where for me, I've had past breakthrough. So I have current revelation of my situation, which now gives me motivation when I'm feeling like I'm on empty. That's good. That I now can get through it because yeah. I know God and I have already been there and he already did that. So yeah. I'm going to be okay. The second thing when you're dealing with revelation that you need to acknowledge is it's time to embrace the truth. Okay. So my big thing that I have been addressing this year and my dad is helping me with this, which I just love that my, my earthly father, along with my heavenly father are talking to me about this at the same time. Mm -hmm. Um, shout out to my dad, Larry. He's amazing. And my mom, but you know, procrastination has been a challenge for me and in it's, I think I actually like the, it might sound strange, but the adrenaline. creativity and the adrenaline rush that comes with a deadline, yeah. you know, things, 
you know, are, that are urgent, I perform better with. And so I can procrastinate. And so this is something that you've got to deal with your current situation. If you're feeling like you're on empty, you may be procrastinating like me. And you've got to embrace, embrace that truth and realize that that's actually a lie because that's a resting place. Uh -oh. yeah. I know I'm stepping on toes, <laughs> but here's the thing. Here's the thing. When you, you know, your empty place is not a resting place and procrastination while wow, I'm getting this aha as I'm speaking it to y'all right yeah. now. All right. We're about to break off that lie in my life. Procrastination yeah. is a resting place and we're not meant to be there. Here's the thing, guys. We are the head and not the tail. Yes. Right. And we have to understand who we truly are and not what we're feeling like today. And that's a tough thing. I need and you I'm to not say saying... that again. I need you to say <laughs> that again. That is we so have... key for people yeah. to say that again. Yeah, we do have to understand who we truly are, our identity in Christ, declare those scriptures, speak that word, read your Bible. Sing those worship songs that speak to the depths of who you are. I know I have had a particular song, which I'll go back through and I'll post it in this comment thread right in this moment on the video replay so you can see it too. It's called Reckless Love. And it's been like a beautiful reminder for me the past two weeks as I've just been feeling empty that God has this incredible, endless, reckless love for me. And that helped me have this deep revelation of him and all the love that he has powering my life that shifted my situation and gave me motivation to tackle the exact same things, but with a new love, with a new joy, with a new hope, with um, a truth. And that's it. When you're in the empty place, you get that that truth revelation, right? That's what this is all about today. Yeah. And so, you know, what happens is when you have that revelation of the situation, you find motivation. And then this funny thing happens that Yolanda's going to tell you about. And you've got all this motivation. And so there's only one thing left for you to do. So Yolanda, have at it. Exactly. And, and I want to say to business owners and entrepreneurs that may be watching is that Sometimes when you get in this empty place, it may be a project you're working on, or it may be that you need to shift your mindset to even think about doing something different. Sometimes we get comfortable in a position Ooh. when God is trying to move you to the next level, but you're That's so good. comfortable in that position that, that it becomes empty for you. I was talking on a podcast a couple of weeks about this, that Sometimes you're sitting in a position and you're feeling like you're in somebody else's seat. You're, you've become empty because you've given out all you're supposed to give out in that particular position. Wow. Whew. And you're staying there because it's comfortable. Ooh, I know this. Even though you're <laughs> empty. Just think about it. We stay in places that no longer feed us because we're comfortable. That's good. And That's so good. we have to really examine. This is not just about the way I feel in ministry, it's about the day-to-day -day things that you're doing that God has called you to do and the impact you're supposed to be making that you've come become comfortable in that empty place because it's a place of comfort, but it's not your resting place. So we have to do what? There's something we have to do to-, Ooh, to We gotta do that. something. Hey, I can, yeah. I can dance. I can yeah. dance. I'm so excited for you to tell them what's about to happen. Yes, you have to move. You have yeah. to move. You have to do oh. something. You have to move from that place. You have to move your mindset. You have to think differently. You have, it's an action word. You have to make something happen. So when you think you are empty, it's when you should move. Woo. Come on. When you, when you believe that you are in an empty place, that's when you should move. Because I really believe that's when yeah. you're going to have the most impact is when you're in that place and you say, okay, I'm no longer going to believe this lie. I'm no longer going to believe this place that I'm in that's not no longer feeding me. I'm no longer going to agree with it. So when you make that move, you're going to have a great impact on even other people around you. I really that's believe good. even when you think you're empty, you're full. Yes. Because there's another level God wants to take you to. So even though you're feeling empty in that place, when you move, you're going to realize, oh, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. I'm not really empty. I'm really full because when I begin to move, that's when I realize that I, I am full. 
Yes, yeah, that's when God used you. That's I, I want to speak to that because that's yes. that's part of the lie that we're unweaving here is when you believe that you're empty, you actually think there's nothing inside you. You're uninhibited. There's 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 nothing there. And that is literally the lie because Holy Spirit is within you. You are Absolutely. full. Absolutely. You're not empty. Absolutely. You're just feeling that way. The believing exactly. the lie. So and, and come I on, go we, on, Yolanda. I think we believe the lie that our situation is the worst. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Nobody's ever dealt with it. <laughs> right. But, but I really believe that your empty could be someone else's fool. Woo. And so you have to really take a look and say, okay, I'm feeling like this is the worst. There's something, somebody's dealing with much worse than me and they moved. That's I mean, good. you hear about, entertainers and people in ministry and you know we 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 see the bishop jakes and we see the oprah winfrey's and 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 all of the entrepreneurs out there that are making billions and bill gates and all of them we believe they don't have a story but if you sit mm -hmm. with these individuals you'll hear that they were in an empty place and they decided even with tyler i'm no longer gonna be homeless right I'm no longer gonna decision be comfortable in this place I am because I know God has more for me. I, it, it's something when you really know in your knowing, not just somebody, you, you know, in you, you know, some, I, I always just, you know, in your knowing, you know, in deep down. <laughs> That's good. I need yeah. that to be a t-shirt, Yolanda. Yes, know you know know in knowing. Knowing. <laughs> God's got great things for you. Even even if you don't even see all of it there, even if nobody even believes that God has all that, nobody believed Bishop Jakes would even be anybody that knew we would even know him. He said, sometimes I come home and my lights were off. Wow. Sometimes I, I would walk around with shoes and holes in the bottom of it. Never thought that he would be the man that everybody knows right now. And wow. so even though you may be in a place where you're feeling empty, you have to move. You have to move That's with what good. you know. Just like this show says, flow with what you know. What do you already have in your hand? Whatever, what, what do you already know that you can move out in? Even That's feeling so good. empty, move. Remember, yeah. remember, I, I still have something that someone else needs. Remember that you have something that someone needs. Somebody's waiting on the gift that you have. That's good. Every day is an opportunity to bring hope to someone, whether it's in a grocery store, the person in the cubicle next to you, the person in the office with you, that you can be that person that'll help them if you would just move. Wow. When you think, when you feel like you're, you're, you're at an empty place, what we're saying to you today, tonight, is to just move. Just move. Yeah. Just move. You know, there's, there's someone that's watching tonight that I don't think's ever turned in, tuned into the show before, and I'm not going to call them out publicly, but I remember this person sending me a video of them in the resting place. We'll just say it that way. Yeah. And I remember like sobbing, seeing them in that place, literally holding on to hope, holding on to their dream and choosing to move. And I remember being like, this person's going to be okay. And yeah. their dream's going to come to fruition and they're going to make it and it's going to be real. So you know who you are. I have been your cheerleader forever and I'm cheerleading you again. So like that was a season of resting place and I commend you for moving and um, and literally moving to the city to pursue your dreams. So props to you. Dreams are happening. So hey, hey, <laughs> there's man, a testimony I, on that side of things. Thank you so. all that are have joined us. I see several comments here and Junior said he's going to he's got errands around, but he's going to tune in back in two <laughs> later. So those that are watching now and those that are watching later. Just know we hope that you will be blessed. And you know, Christina, what we always like to do is we gotta yeah. leave them with some homework. You know, we've got to leave them always. with something to <laughs> work on later. There's there you always have to have a practical application of what you do. When I go to trainings, I want to know how can I apply this when I leave yeah. this place. When I go to church on Sunday, I want to know this word that I've heard from the movie. How do I apply that when I leave? of the church. And so we want to leave you with some things that you can do to kind of help you move from that empty place and things that are going to help you kind of stay from that. We all go through those periods where we're feeling that. 
And when you begin to feel it, one of the first thing that I would say for you to do is start praying the truth. Number one, yeah. Start praying the truth. Pray Good. in the spirit. Don't receive the lies that you're hearing that you're not going to make it. And Christina, that was so good when you said you think back on what in the past when things worked out and God made a way. We have to always I have a list of things, blessings and how God can come through. And I'll pull those journals out to remind myself if he did it, then he'll do it again. But what we get stuck in is believing the lie that we're not going to make it. Yeah, that's good. I actually heard someone explain, I don't remember where I was, so I'm sorry I'm not going to give you proper credit, incredible person that told me this wisdom, but <laughs> you're a faithful leader, so we're passing it on. And they said that you need to always recall three specific things. You need to always be able to recall your salvation story when you encountered Christ and your why for that. I think that's important for every believer. And if you don't have that story, if you just are a Christian because your mama and your daddy and your granny went to church and you went to church, then please DM us and we'll talk to you about that, okay? Right. <laughs> or talk to your pastor <laughs> or your life group leader. But you should have this beautiful story about when you made the choice to come into relationship with Christ. The second thing is a story about when God provided for you, whether it's that last minute phone bill pay, being paid, that missions trip experience, or just literally that understanding that you are grateful you have a job. I mean, as Americans, if you're watching with us from the States, we're so blessed with the things that we think is lack, honestly. And so we, we're seeing God be a provider daily. You want to write that down. Yeah. And then the third thing is a moment where you've experienced healing, whether you've personally experienced it from the Lord, or maybe you witnessed someone else get radically healed, saved of cancer, diagnosed with a tumor, and it's gone in Jesus' name. Like whatever that story is for you, if you can just write down a healing story, a provider story, and your salvation story, yeah. and like pull that out whenever you are stressed, you're feeling empty, you're not trusting in God, that is going to be a breakthrough secret, secret weapon that you can have to, to move you from the empty place. And I think the, the, before we pray for everyone, the other two, listening to the truth from other people, sometimes, yes. sometimes we get kind of weird and we want, oh, I'm waiting for the word from the Lord and you want something to fall out of the sky. Now he does speak to us in unique ways, but sometimes he sends people Mm. A phone call, a friend, an email that comes. I mean, it can come in all different kind of ways. And so be open and flexible to how God will use other people to speak truth to you. And then hearing and believing the truth. Hearing yeah. and believing the truth. And Christina, you want to uh, share the scripture we had? I do. Yeah. And then we will pray. I would love that. It's funny. So it's Romans 10, 17. And the scripture actually says, so faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. And what's funny is I wrote it down in our notes as something different. And Yolanda's chuckling over there because she knows what I'm about to say. And what's interesting in the revelation I just had, which I thought was a typo, was not a typo. It was a reminder that it is my job as much as the pastor's job to hear, believe, and declare the truth. Yes. Of the word. And so if you're looking to figure out how to move in God and, you know, kind of do this homework, you've got to hear the word of God and the, the truth, if you will, and believe it just as much as if the pastor was preaching it. When you read your word, you speak your word, you've got to believe that word the same way as you would um, because the authority of Christ resides in you. So yeah, let's let's pray. If there's anyone that has a specific prayer request, now would be the time to post it. We're here. Um, we're so glad Anthony's watching and I see Luana's joined us and there's a couple Hi, other Anthony. people. But <laughs> yes, we're just so excited to have new people on the show tonight, which is always so good. So we're just going to pray. And um, yeah, I'm going to actually Hi, lower Don, my head Toddy, to my like... friend Don Toddy, I see her. Thank you. Oh, for good. Yeah. Yes. So glad. Yeah. So let's get to it. Let's pray because this is my favorite part. So dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Lord, for every person watching live. We thank you, Lord, for every person watching on the replay. And we thank you, Lord, for every person that this gift, 
this message gets shared to that helps them move from the empty place into where God needs them to be. We thank you, Lord, that every single person watching today is going to pray the truth. Every single person is going to listen to the truth. And every single person that hears the truth is also going to believe the truth, not just from a, a mindset place, but deep in their soul and their spirit. We call everything in alignment right now in the name of Jesus. And we just thank you, Lord, for these business leaders. We thank you, Lord, for these thought leaders, these entrepreneurs, these mommies, these daddies, these brothers, these sisters in Christ. God, we thank you, Lord, that you are giving them an in-season word in this moment. It is not an accident that they're here. It is by divine appointment that they're hearing this word today, God. And we thank you, Lord, that you are giving them that aha, that they've been feeling like they're in an empty place. But the aha is that they can't rest there. They can't stay there. They're, they have a divine revelation coming to them so they can move from their situation into where you have them, God. So Lord, just bless these people. Bless their businesses, God. We pray, Lord, for breakthroughs in Jesus' name. And Yolanda, go ahead and pray if you, you're sensing anything else and close us out before our April 10th show. Lord, I thank you for those that are watching, those who will watch later. God, I, I pray a refreshing over them, those that have been feeling stuck and, and feeling like they're in an empty place. Lord, I just pray that as they listen to this broadcast, oh God, that they will be free. They will feel the freedom come forth, oh God. I thank you for leaders moving forth in all that you've called them to do, oh God. We just thank you for this time with these amazing leaders, oh God, that are making kingdom impact, oh God. So we yes. thank you for this opportunity just to share. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you all Amen. for joining us and we'll see yes. you on April the 10th. Yes. April 10th. April 10th. <laughs> April 10th. We'll be back here. Facebook.com forward slash yes builds. So excited for you guys to go ahead and click to receive the notifications from Yolanda Shields Yes Builds account. And that way you will find out with any events that we have going on, speaking engagements or other opportunities to hear the flow show. Thank you so much. Comment below. And as always, send us your prayer requests. We are praying for you. Have an incredible day. Keep flowing when what you know. Talk to you hey. soon. <laughs>